Are you intimidated by a task that is way bigger than anything you've done before, like a dissertation or a book? A task that seems to be hanging over you, like some sort of giant threat, sucking the joy out of everything you do? This video provides some pointers on how to handle such large projects and how to simply get them done. So if you're interested, keep watching. But before that, please remember to hit the like button to help the channel. And subscribe if you haven't already. Having myself written a dissertation and several books, I think I understand why young academics find these tasks intimidating and why they're having difficulties to accomplish them. And so I thought I would share some of the techniques and tactics that have helped me personally to accomplish such projects. And to be sure these ideas are not really mine, most people working on larger or longer projects would be relying on them, whether intuitively or consciously. And right at the start, I would mention three things you should not do when facing such large projects. Number one is to be intimidated. This is a common attitude towards something you have not done before, especially if it's something challenging and requires quite a bit of work, which dissertations and books by definition are. When you write, sometimes you seem to be making little progress and you lose heart, thinking that the task is larger than what you can handle. But this is not true, because there are plenty of people who manage to complete a dissertation or a book, even the ones who initially thought that they wouldn't be able to. So don't be afraid of the task, just keep moving forward. The second thing you should not do is procrastinate. Procrastination is basically putting things off, waiting to work on them until things get better until you feel that your personal circumstances or state of mind make it possible for you to resume the work. But the optimal conditions never seem to arrive, and there's always something that is lacking, or there's always something that is more pressing and needs to be handled immediately. But what you should do is to put in the hours no matter what. Don't wait for the right moment. And the third thing you should not do is to give up. This of course means the end of the project when you decide that it is no longer possible for you to finish it. In a sense, this is the admission of failing. But if it's an important project like a dissertation or a first book, you should never give up on it, but find ways to keep pushing forward, even if only a tiny bit at a time. And these three things you should not do are really incremental steps. They build upon each other. So you should make an effort to stop at the first one until things escalate and you quit the project. Okay, but what are the things that you should do when working on a larger project? What are the things that help you along the way? And here I will talk about five things that will help you accomplish such projects. Number one is to break down the project into smaller steps. This is probably the most important advice which is advocated by everyone who has been through the process you need to identify the individual steps that make up your whole project and then deal with those steps individually. And so you would always focus on a single task and that task being much smaller would feel manageable to do. Because in a larger project, there will always be smaller steps and some of these will be building on each other and others can be detached completely. You will need to get some books from the library or order some from Amazon and then you need to read and digest them you need to track down references and order them through interlibrary loan. Or you may need to go to a different city in France or Germany and work in the library for a few days on site. So these steps together represent the structure of your project. They are the individual tasks you need to accomplish. But you can also look at it from the point of view of the book. Every book will have chapters and chapters will have sections and subsections. There will be an introduction and a bibliography and possibly an index. And it is much easier to think about these smaller chunks separately, rather than always thinking about the entire book. Point number two is establish a hierarchy of smaller steps. This means identifying which tasks are the most important ones, that require heavy thinking and most mental energy. And which are the ones that can be done even when you're less inspired, when you only have 30 minutes between running errands which are the ones other steps depend on, and so they have the capacity to delay the whole project. Because one thing you should strive to avoid is to create bottlenecks in your workflow. Essentially, this means that you would be developing a project management chart, except that you're the only participant in this project. 
Point number three is build a timeline. This point depends on the previous two in that it requires you to identify smaller steps and then create a hierarchy among them. And then you can map the individual steps onto a timeline so that you know at any given moment where you are in the process, how far you need to go, and what is the concrete task that you need to be working on at this very moment. This makes your progress measurable, and seeing yourself ticking off individual tasks will fuel your motivation to push on. Just as importantly, the timeline also means that you will have clear deadlines for individual tasks, and that sometimes you will need to step up your game to stay on track. And the timeline will also help you by eliminating the need to make decisions. Decisions can take up a lot of mental energy. They can paralyze you. They can push you onto the track of procrastination and delay. But if you have a plan, you don't need to be making decisions. You just move on to the next step and then to the one after that. Point number four is build a daily routine. This is a requirement for any serious work. You need to develop a habit to write every single day, rather than trying to binge write whenever the need arises. Because you may be able to binge write a research note or even a short research paper, but you cannot do that with a book or dissertation. Writing projects beyond a certain size require extended effort, effort stretched out over longer periods of time. And for that, you need to build the habit of moving forward in smaller increments. Building a daily writing routine is probably the most important thing you can do to jumpstart your academic career. Because even if you're not working on a specific large project, this habit will keep generating new publications for your CV. And it is very easy to do. You just need to allocate some time every day for writing. Or if you're truly busy, then maybe two or three times a week. The rationale behind this is actually very simple. As long as you keep putting in the hours, your project will keep moving forward until you reach the end. And my point number five is involve others in the process. And this point is very important because especially with larger writing projects, we have the tendency to work in isolation. It is a solitary experience. And immersing ourselves in our work may cause us to experience burnout or the loss of sense of direction and meaning. So it is vital to keep talking to others, to keep them informed on how you're progressing. Ideally, you should also share your chapters with others, which is really the best way of improving your writing. You should present your research at workshops and seminars, which are again great for feedback, but also create deadlines forcing you to complete a draft paper and a presentation. And all this pushes you forward on your journey. Okay, so these are my main points on how to handle large research projects. These are things that worked for me personally. Let me know if there are other points that have worked for you. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and see you next time.